the, the, the recording is all going to start with, with Gracie's heavy breathing and, and Eli. The, the, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about authority. Now, if you remember last week, we were talking about the second white lie, which was basically you can't judge me. Now, the thing about these lies is, is they have just a kernel of truth to them, and that's what makes them so dangerous. Um, so just a little recap of what we were talking about. We're, we looked at that part in Romans where Jesus, or not Jesus, where Paul says there's now no condemnation. And what he means by that is that we stand justified before God. That, that doesn't mean that we can live however we want or that we're free from the idea of authority. Um, so that also means we're not free from weighing our own heart. We are supposed to be weighing our heart. Jesus tells us to judge correctly. Um, and then uh, we're also not free from human authority, both in the church and out of the church. And also, uh, we do still face God's judgment um, if we um, if we disobey Him. Like it, it, not not like I'm not saying if we like mess up, but I'm saying when we choose to live in sin, he, you you can't do the wrong thing on purpose continually like that, and then just expect God to like. Turn, turn his eye. So, um, if you are living in sin, in sin you, you stand ju judged before God. And um, w then we talked about the idea that God isn't who we want him to be. Like, some people want him to be the tyrant, some people want him to be the love bug. So, just a, a few things about the idea of authority. First off, and we talked about this last week, authority is established by God. He's the one who's, who created it. Um, the Trinity itself works on a structure of authority. Man was created with the idea of authority. Um, civilization has the idea of authority. Families have the idea of authority. Uh, the church has the idea of authority. And um, whenever in the Bible there's um, talk, talk about rebellion and that kind of stuff, where, where God is the one condoning the rebellion, um, that disobedience is an exception. And it's like... Uh, it's, the, the idea is an honor to God. So if God, for instance, in the, in the Bible told someone to go against authority, that's a little bit different than them just being rebellious. Um, another good example would be like um, if the government, I don't know, decided that we couldn't have church because of some virus or something, you know, and then we decided to do it anyways. Uh, that would be a good example of uh, uh, disobeying for the sake of honoring God. And there's a difference between being a rebellious person and trying to honor God with your choices. Um, the Bible does say that rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft; it's equal to it. So that's kind of something that that needs to be, you know, remembered. Having a rebellious heart is something that you can't escape from. It's something that you you you, you carry your the burden around with you, and um, it's just something that really affects the choices you make and and the way, the opportunities that you have. Sometimes people will miss out on opportunities from God and from people because they have a rebellious heart that they don't even realize that they're missing out on those opportunities. Um, now the Bible says to respect uh, your mother and father, um, to honor your mother and father. Uh, you never outgrow that. There's never a, a time in your life when you get old enough. It's not just saying kids who are living at home with their parents. It's saying children of all ages, out, uh, you, you never outgrow respect and honor for your parents. But with that, there's a little bit of um, confusion that comes along with it. Respecting and honoring is not necessarily obeying. Um, you, can disobey, you can disobey your parents, for instance, in a respectful way. And then you can do it in a, with a rebellious attitude. So the, the, there's two kind of two different things there. So for instance, let's say, let's say you're doing your best to respect and honor your parents. You know, you, you're not talking bad about them behind their back. Whenever you think something, you just kind of, Lord, forgive me for my attitude, that kind of stuff. And then they say, okay, um, this whole God thing is just a joke. You need to give that up and you know, devote yourself to science and nothing but science. Nothing but science. Um, you know, and that doesn't mean that you have to reject God because you're respecting and honoring. See what I mean? It's not always um, – respecting and honoring is not always the same as obedience. So there's a few, a few things to mention about sin that are oftentimes overlooked. First off, when Paul says something – uh, in the New Testament, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that he wants you to throw out everything else in the Old Testament, or yeah, I mean that's 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 good enough to say it like that. See, what people do is they come to a verse that they like. So like, there's now no condemnation for me. That means I can I can do whatever I want. And you can't judge me. But the problem is, is that well, what about the rest of that same book where Paul says, hey, 
don't do that. And then the whole rest of the Bible where God says, hey, don't do that. Um, so the statement, no condemnation for those in Christ, that doesn't mean that you can just throw away the rest of the Bible or the book of Romans. And it doesn't mean that you can live however you want. Um, and then, so then that takes us to the idea of sin. Uh, this is something that, that people oftentimes mistake, and a lot of the reason why they do that is because they want to say, my sin is not that bad. So they say something along the, along the lines of, oh, all sin is equal. And it's like, well, yeah, all sin does equally separate us from God. That's true. Sin is sin. However, not all sins are equal in their severity. Uh, for instance, God is harsher on taking advantage of the weak. Um, he tends to give orphans, for instance, more leeway than he would others. Uh, he tends to uh, be more um, – bring by things to bless the orphans more so than, than others. Um, and if you do something mean to an orphan, for instance, God's going to judge you a lot harsher than if you did something mean to just another person. Um, he makes that abundantly clear all throughout Scripture. When you take advantage of people who are weak, that's just something that God really doesn't like a lot. <laughs> um, another thing that God specifically mentions as being worse than other things is witchcraft. Um, rebellion is one of the things that he can – they list blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, idolatry. These are things that really gets God's attention in a bad way. Um, so Romans 6, 1-2 through says this, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? And so this is earlier in that same book, uh, that I, the Now No Condemnation book. That's, it's in, this is in that same book. This is just a little bit earlier. The problem is, is that sometimes people just pick and choose what they want to do, and then they get a verse that supports them in that. Like there's this one verse that says, uh, do whatever you will. Just as long as you don't, you know, uh, I forget exactly how, how it's worded, but it, they, they jerk it out to say, um, I can, basically, it's lawful for me to do anything. It's like, uh, that's not really what it means. <laughs> Anyways, um, oftentimes, uh, this kind of quote unquote Christianity, it treats Jesus more like a get out of jail free card. So basically, I can sin now and pay credit later. But. That's that's not how Jesus works. It's it's not it's not a it's not a credit card. Uh, God expects us to live for Him, and when we try and play dumb with the whole "oh, I'll just repent before I die" thing, God's not an idiot, and I mean He definitely does know the heart. And uh, just kind of a, remember, you can't really pick and choose when you die. Who says you'll get that chance to say sorry, anyways? Um, so just a real quick summary from last week and, and, and what we looked at earlier. First off, God punishes us for disobeying. When we dis even even when we repent, sometimes we still have to deal with the consequences of our actions. We say all throughout the Bible. Um, God al uh, also uses earthly authority to bring justice, and we see that not just in the church but also in the world. So we are – yes, we, we can be judged by the world and by God and by the church. So there's kind of you know no basis for the idea of you can't judge me. Um, if you are not submitted to God and rebellious to, towards authority, you stand condemned before God. It's that attitude that God knows what's in your heart. And then, like I said before, you can disobey without being rebellious. So Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And that kind of, I think, really emphasizes the whole idea about you know obeying God versus living however you want. It's not about, oh, I call myself a Christian, or, oh, me and God have a secret arrangement. You know, we're on good terms. I, I have a secret relationship with the man upstairs. I don't get into the whole religion thing. And I, and I understand what those pe people are saying, but once again, <laughs> not everyone who says, says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. I mean, he, he couldn't have been any more clear about that. So just a few a few final thoughts before we um, close onto this, and then next week we'll start with the next white line. Um Oh, before I forget, are you guys all good with seeing uh, Boss Baby 2? I thought it looked kind of funny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll see that um, on the night of VBS. Uh, so that's like the third week of July or something like that. Um, anyways, truth is not what you want it to be or what fits your agenda. A lot of times people will, like, I, like I've, I've said quite a few times, people will try and make God to their own choosing. And then they'll, they'll say, oh, you can't judge me, just so that they can get away with their sin. Um, 
it's like I saw the funniest thing. Uh, there, you know, basically Christians who go on and on about homosexuals being living in sin and then watch porn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, I, I totally agree with what he was saying. Um, well, that's different. That's not my sin. And it's like, no, homosexuality is, you know, definitely something there. But porn also is too. So you know. Um, so God established authority and order. That's something that he created. Whenever you see things that are just disorderly, God's not the author of that. For instance, when you go into a church and everybody's speaking in tongues at once, that's that's not that's not God. He specifically says, no, don't all speak at the same time. That, that's just going to cause more problems. Um, if you deny the fact of authority, like, oh, no, um, um, I, 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 I submit to God. Well, yeah, but God created man's authority, so... You can't just deny it uh, or just simply not submit to it um, and then just pretend like now, now it doesn't exist just because I've denied it. It's like when people are sick. Oh, no, I'm not sick. I'm not going to give it power by mentioning it. Um, okay, but I mean power or no, it's still there. So, you know, I, I, it always gets me when God says, hey, present your request. And then people say, no, 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 I don't need to present my request because, you know, I, I'm not sick. And it's like, well, okay, but that's exactly the opposite of what God said. Um, so God has established pastors over the church, not modern-day apostles or prophets. This is one thing you hear a lot um, in Christian literature, the idea of uh, – it's called the fivefold ministry. And the idea of the apostle, apostles are uh, – there's modern-day apostles and that kind of stuff. We are actually going to look at that um, in a couple weeks. So just remember that um, about the idea of apostles, and we'll come back to that. Um, God will hide himself from those who are too prideful to submit, and they will stop growing. Um, sometimes we think, oh no, I don't have to submit to authority, and me and God can just continue this thing that we have. And it's like, well, no, God, God will, God will withdraw Himself. If you are in Christ, you will still make mistakes. Um, I just absolutely want to be clear about this because I've gone to great lengths to talk about the idea of, um, you know, living in sin and how and how God's not going to bless you while you're living in sin. But with that being said, if you are in Christ, you will still make mistakes. You will still sin. Rest on the fact that his blood is perfectly sufficient for you, not that you are perfect. There's a complete difference there. If God, if Christ's blood is perfectly sufficient, that means my failure doesn't um, – doesn't, uh, what is it called? Um, cancel out God's forgiveness. But if I'm trusting in my own perfection, okay, I'm, I'm saved, so now I have to be perfect. Well, now it's not about – God anymore. It's like people who are caught in addiction. I and mean, it could be pornography or drugs or anything. You have this repeated cycle of, oh, I'll try harder. I'll earn my worthiness. And it's like, um, no, you will mess up again. Maybe you can overcome an addiction, at least for a time, or maybe permanently, but that doesn't mean you will never sin ever again. And even if you do sin again, that's not the point. Because it's not about your perfection, but about Christ's forgiveness. So it's two completely different things. And when you start to focus on God's forgiveness over you perfectly performing, you find a lot more freedom in life. So that takes us to we keep trying because Christ has accepted us. We don't try so that God will accept us. We keep trying because he has already accepted us. It, it makes it where we're not striving anymore. It makes us with so, have so much more peace. And it's not always it's not that guilt trip anymore. Um, so the next the next white lie we'll look at is the idea that the fake is easy to tell from the real. Um, any questions about this? Okay, so um, I think we should 